Hello and welcome to At Home Today. We hope that you're uh, getting into the groove of the preparation for the holidays. And this program today is part two of our cookies that we're doing. We did last week and this week. And you know, the key to being able to pull all of this off, because no matter how much we say, you know, we're going to cut back, if you don't do it at the beginning, you're going to do it at the end because it's what is expected. That's what everybody wants. Where's those cookies? Where's the, this one? So pace yourself. The word today is pace. You can't do it all at once. That's why we're taking two weeks. We showed you four last week. We're going to show you four more cookies this week. And you don't have to make them all, but I'm showing you, make some now, package them, put them in the freezer, and forget about them. If you have to write liver on the package so the kids stay out of them, that's all right. But whatever you do, just package them, get them put away, and then when it comes closer to the holidays, you're not thinking, oh, i got to bake cookies and I don't have any time. Pacing is important. Do your linens, make sure they're all all um, in good order. Make sure that you start to, when you go to the, to the supermarket, put some extra things that you know you're going to need down the road. If you make a certain kind of a dip, make sure you get some of the things that aren't perishable. And just stock your pantry now. This is the time to do that. It's really important so that you don't have so much cost at the end, plus you don't have all that on your weighing on your mind. I've got to do this, I've got to do that. Pace yourself. So get the cards. This is a good time. The second week in December, it's a great time to do the cards, okay? So um, today we're going to show you, as I said, four more cookies. The first two I'm presenting are not in our cookbook, but the others are. And I think you're going to enjoy them. And we'll be right back to get started in just a moment. Stay with us. Here's today's at-home hint. Here's today's at-home hint. To make a quick cookie, take a mini pretzel, place a Hershey's Kiss on top, Place in a 350 degree oven for a few seconds until soft, and then place an M&M candy on top of the kiss. Really cute and the kids will love it. If you have an at-home hint, a favorite recipe, or just a friendly greeting you'd like to share, we'd like to hear from you. Post it in the comments of this video or visit our Facebook page. Okay, the first cookie that we're doing today is called Red Lips. They're called Red Lips. And basically what it is, it's a shortbread cookie with raspberry filling. And all I've done here is had a half a cup of sugar and one cup of real butter. Again, don't use margarine, don't use substitutes, use the real thing. And I've creamed that really well with the mixer. And now I'm just going to take two cups of flour. And anybody that makes shortbread knows that's the ingredient, sugar, butter, and flour. And I'm working with my hand, I have a glove on. This will come into a wonderful dough very, very easily. And all you do is just keep mixing and squeezing and mixing because you're incorporating that flour, sugar, and butter. Now, this is one of those cookies that once you do the basic dough, you could like go any which way you want to with it. You could make them, um, I've used this dough and made thumbprints, roll them in nuts, you know, and make them that way. I kind of like the simplicity, because sometimes we get so caught up in, oh, this cookie has to be fancy, or it has to be, you know, something special. It's a Christmas cookie, and we labor and make, and sometimes when I, when I see that, I think, boy, I just like to have a piece of, like, shortbread, just something plain, when you have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. This is, this is great. These freeze well. I showed you last week on uh, <clears throat> how to freeze your cookies, and these will freeze very well, even with the filling in them and you've baked them. See how quickly that comes together? When you can work the dough like this, you know you're pretty well there. Scrape the bowl, get all the, the goodies in there. Now well, all you're gonna do is take a, a cookie sheet, don't grease it. Anytime there's butter, a lot of butter in a batter, you don't have to grease it because the butter will cook out and it will moisten and so you don't have to do it. Now I like to make these about one inch balls, about that big. Place them on the cookie sheet, just like this. And you can put a lot on because these are not going to raise or spread. And they'll stay pretty much the way you shape them, just like so. If you're doing them like for a wedding down the road or something, you could make them smaller, so like one bite, which is nice, they're dainty. But you can crowd them on a small sheet. You can see four across, probably maybe six going down. That's two dozen on a sheet. That's that size, that's pretty good because you have the luxury of doing it because there is nothing that's going to make these raise. Okay? Now, <clears throat> assuming 
we have them all done, okay? Now you want a little dent in there. The best thing to make the little dent is your measuring spoons. Because you know why? They, they make it exactly the right size and uniform. And I take the uh, 1 fourth teaspoon, and all you do, holding the cookie, just press like so. Press, 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 just like that. See that? And you have a dent. Now, if you were making thumbprints, then you would bake them off and bring them out and put your icing in there. But since these are red lips, we have to put the red in here. And I buy the packaged. McGinnis Sisters has wonderful fruit fillings. This is the red raspberry. Lots of fruit in this. Not a lot of goo, but a lot of fruit. And it comes, you know, you just cut it on a diagonal slope. And you just put as much or as little as you would like right in the center. And you know what? It will not, let me get a little knife here. Help me with this. It will not cook all over the place. I've had apricot that I try to do this with and it cooks everywhere. And then they burn to the, you know, they burn to your, your baking pan. You can't get them off. And it's a disappointment. You say, boy, good, all that work, all the expense. And then they don't even look nice. Basically, you put as much or as little just like that. You put these into a 350 degree preheated oven. Important, we talk about that all the time, to preheat that oven. And when you have, you bake that for only 15 to 20 minutes in a preheated oven. These are wonderful. You can use apricot. You could fill them with plain and bring them out and put like a, a runny icing, chocolate icing in there. Red and green icing would go nicely in them. Simple and delicious. Red lips, all right? Okay, now we're gonna move on. Let me do a little maintenance here, clean up a little bit. Again, these two recipes I'm doing right now are not in the cookbook, but some of the others that we're gonna show you and the ones we did last week are. So don't forget you're gonna wanna send and get your newsletter. It's important because it'll all be in that. All right, this is called Mundle bread. Um, I believe it has a Jewish background like a cookie, but it's different than a biscotti, but it looks like a biscotti. Sometimes biscottis are really hard. And if you don't dunk them, they're like almost inedible. They're good, and I really like them, but boy, when they're hard, they're not, not as enjoyable. This one looks like it, but it's a softer texture. And <clears throat> I have a half a, a two-thirds cup of sugar in the bowl. I'm gonna put three-fourths cup of vegetable oil, like a Crisco oil. We're gonna do two eggs. And I like to use the large egg. Don't go extra large, don't go mini or the ones you get on sale or whatever. This is gonna be just a, the large egg. Don't go very large or whatever. Jumbos, not good. All right, now I'm just gonna mix this up. And you have a choice of adding vanilla or almond extract to this. And I personally, I really have gotten into using almond because I just love the flavor. How about a teaspoon, which is what we had in our little bottle. Okay, and just mix that pretty well by hand. Don't have to use a mixer or blender or nothing like that. And when it gets pretty well blended, now we're going to take two and a fourth cups of flour and one teaspoon of baking powder. That's in this. I'm gonna add it to my flour and mix it through really well. Whoops. And now we're just gonna drop this in like so. And we're gonna mix this together. Now, when this comes and forms into a really nice dough, next thing we're gonna do is shape this into two logs. And we're gonna put this on our cookie sheet. When the logs are shaped, we're gonna mix sugar and cinnamon together and we're gonna sprinkle it all over those logs. And that's cinnamon to taste. If you like a lot of cinnamon like Paul, my Paul does, you'll wanna do that, okay? If you don't, cut back on it and just mostly it will be the sugar. But these will come out very nicely and you're gonna bake them the first time in a preheated 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes. Then you're gonna bring them out and you're gonna slice them after they cool just a little bit 
on a diagonal like you do a biscotti and bake them again because that dries them out a little bit. I'm going to tell you it is so good. And I'm going to finish this when we come back, more cookies, and I'll show you what I've done, okay? Do you love watching At Home with Arlene Williams? Then be sure to check out our new YouTube channel. It's filled with classic episodes from over 20 years of At Home, and more videos are added each day. And don't forget to click the subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. All right, the Mundo bread is going in a 350 degree oven, and it's gonna bake, make sure you preheat it, and you see, I have sprinkled the cinnamon and sugar on the top, going right in like that. And don't forget, set your timer for 30 minutes. And at 30 minutes, then we're going to bring them out, let them cool just a little bit, slice them diagonally, and put them back in so they get that toasty. They are so good. Not hard, delicious. Okay. Now, for the next cookie that we're doing, these are called almond butter fingers. And we have three-fourths of a cup of butter. You know, keep your eye watching for sales on butter at this time, right now. And stock up on it, okay? This is a good time. Buy three, four pounds at a time. Throw them in the freezer. Because when you start then to make all these goodies, you're going to be glad you had got, you've got them stashed away. You don't have to spend $3 a pound for butter. Uh, try to anticipate any baking needs that you're going to be Get the flour. Get the sugar, get things like that that you need, all right? Okay, we're creaming. These are called almond butter fingers and we're creaming the butter. And what I'm doing now, it's gonna add a third of a cup of sugar, some almond extract. I need to shut it off to do the almond extract because I have a feeling that baby would like to fly, if you know what I mean. So we're just gonna do about that much. I love that taste of almond, it's wonderful. And continue to go. Again, we're gonna beat, cream it really, really well. To get this baby rolling, there we go. <clears throat> so this is what we have, and this needs to be creamed well. And you know, if you're at home and you're making these, you're gonna cream this a, a whole lot more than I'm taking the time to, because I'm like rushing through here, because I wanna cover some more cookies for you. So we're going to consider that that right here is creamed, but you would do it a little bit longer than that, all right? Now, the next thing that we're going to do is add our flour, which is one and three-fourths cups of flour, all right? And there, when we stir this flour in, we want to gather it now like in a ball, because this is going to make the dough. Let me tell you what else is in this one. We have some finely chopped nuts, or even ground nuts. We have those right here, okay? And we're gonna sweeten them up with some sugar. And we also have an egg white because these are wonderful. These cookies are incredible, flaky and light. And the shape is nice because they are about this long and you sprinkle the nuts on the top, which is a, a different look. And it kind of sets off a, a plate. Sometimes cookies all look the same because they're either round or you cut them in squares. This is nice because this is like a finger long, so the shape is different. And that brings an accent many times to, to what you're making. So I'm going to put my glove on here and get in there. You know, Christmas, these Christmas cookies, don't think of it as a drudgery. Oh, I have to do. If you're used to doing 10 kind and you just can't do it, don't do 10 different varieties. Only do five or buy some. Maybe somebody's having, you know, maybe they're trying to earn some money because they're having a rough time in their life and they say, well, I'll do some baking for you or I'll help you out. Take it. Take their offer. Uh, number one, it helps you out and it certainly is going to help them out. So you'd want to think about that. Okay, so we have the almond extract in there and now we're stirring in and we're going to gather this into a ball. And these, love this, this Anything with almond is just so, the, the lightness of it is incredible. It's just great. It's just great. So we're going to gather this into a ball, and it's coming together. You may have to work with this a little bit. That's okay. When you get it into a ball, then we're going to divide this dough into three equal parts, okay? And the three parts, I'm just going to roll one out to show you, all right? 
because I don't have time to work this as much as I normally would. So I would take about a third of the dough. If you can picture that, just about that much. And it's a nice moist dough. You can see it's not difficult to work with at all. And we're gonna take some flour and lightly do it on our board. Remember, if this is dry, you don't wanna add a ton of flour because it makes it drier. If your dough is a little moist, you can go a little heavier on the flour that you're gonna roll it out in. But you need some on the top and a little bit on the bottom, all right? And now we're gonna roll it. Let me get rid of the mixer. And we're gonna roll this out. And when you see it crack like that, just gather it together, twist it around, press on it a bit more. Get rid of this glove too because I can't stand that. I'm not used to using those, you know? The good old hands, they're, they're the best. Okay, we're rolling it out. And this should be about a fourth of an inch thick. The thickness about a fourth of an inch. Don't worry if it falls apart, just push it together. Will not hurt anybody. And again, do light hand, back and forth, back and forth. You're gonna uh, brush this. You're gonna evenly shape this. And you're gonna brush this with a beaten egg white. And then we're gonna add a little sugar to our nuts. And after we do the beaten egg white on this, in fact, I'll just show you real quickly. Okay. Here it is. Now we're just gonna spread this on because this will help the nuts to adhere, okay? Got too much there. We'll push it to the side. All right, and we'll just cover it because this is what the, the nuts are gonna stick to this, okay? And then we mix the nuts and the sugar together and we sprinkle this over our dough. Now I would go a little thinner if I had the time. I would go a little thinner with these, this dough, because it, it's better if it's thinner because these are supposed to be crispy. And the thicker it is, the less likely it's gonna be that crispiness. So you do that and then you're gonna cut them into fingers. And what you do is just cut across. If you have a pizza cutter, perfect for this. And you wanna make them about a half inch to three fourths of an inch. And if they're a little long, you wanna come down the middle just like this. And then you're gonna take your spatula and put them on your cookie sheet and you're gonna bake them. And I tell you what, when these bake, they're incredible because they get light and crispy and very delicious. The next one I wanted to talk to you about was our orange cookies, our iced orange cookies. We've made them before. It's a, a simple thing that we just assemble everything together. Uh, we start out with our, let's see what we have here, shortening, and we put some sugar in here. And again, it's creaming it. The key to a good iced orange cookie is to have fresh orange juice and fresh grated orange rind or orange peel. That is absolutely necessary. You have to have that because that's what breaks the flavor forth. We're gonna include the recipe for it and we're gonna talk you through it, but I want you to know that this cookie is worth the effort. It's not hard, but it is worth the effort to make them. And this is the one they're gonna say, oh, taste that orange, it's so wonderful. Delicious all the way. We'll be right back in just a minute. Uh, stay with us, there's more of At Home to come. Just go to ctvn.org slash at home to get all the recipes from today's show for free. That's right, no subscriptions. They're available online at no cost and more are being added each day. So join us at ctvn.org slash at home to get today's recipes now. Well, I know it was wild and wooly today because we had so much to cover, but I want you to see the finished product. And of course, all of these recipes and explanations for them are in our monthly newsletter, which you've just got the information on how you can receive it. Let's start here. This cookie right here is the red lip. Isn't that great? Wonderful little cookie. You could put apricots. You could put, uh, if you don't like raspberry, you could do the apricot or icing. Like I said, you could put a big walnut, a whole walnut in there and just bake it that way. You could put jellies in there whatever you desire, that is a great cookie. Kids love that cookie because it's simple. It's an easy, tasty cookie. Next to it, remember I told you about the Mundel bread? Here it is right here. 
mandel bread. And simple, easy to do. You can see that you, you mix up that cinnamon and sugar and you sprinkle over the top and you bring it back out, slice it on the diagonal and cover it again with the cinnamon and sugar mixture. And look, these are not in any way like a biscotti, but oh, are they tender and really, really delicious. You're gonna like that. These cookies all freeze really, really well. You have no problem. Next to it, now we have our almond butter fingers. And don't these look great? These are tasty. Um, they're delicious. They're very simple to do. Very light, not a heavy cookie whatsoever. These are nice on a platter of cookies to accent. Put them, lay them, because the shape is unusual, a little bit different. But this is a delicious cookie. I think you're going to really enjoy all of these cookies, but this is a good one too. Then we have our iced orange cookie. Now we talked about um, mixing the ingredients together. The, the recipe is very simple. And the key to this is using the fresh orange rind that you grate off the orange fresh. That just brings flavor to life. And then you use some of that fresh orange juice in the icing. It's a, what Paul calls his Jack Frost icing. And that flavor is carried in the icing. These freeze so well. You can make them as large as you want. You can make them as small as you want. Um, you could put sprinkles on top of that if you think that's a little bit of a bland color for a holiday cookie. Use your imagination. This is the time of the year the creativity goes crazy. And I hope that we have sparked yours today. And I hope that you've enjoyed that. Uh, the simple suggestions of the four cookies that we've made. But just let your imagination go and you'll be amazed. If you don't put walnuts in this cookie, you could put coconut. Maybe your family doesn't like walnuts. Coconut would be great in that too and adds a moistness to it. Uh, I hope that you have gotten in these last two weeks some ideas of the cookies that you'll be preparing. You know, it's very easy to get caught up in the festivities and all the preparation and I've got to do, I have to do. Please don't leave God out of, the, out of this picture. It's all about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Without him, this would be so meaningless. I ask you to consider that, okay? So until the next time, be sure to join us because it just wouldn't be the same without you here at home. We'll see you then. Food provided by McGinnis Sisters Special Food Stores in Brentwood and Monroeville. Taste the world. Don't forget to click the subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. Thank you for watching. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.